Welcome to my character modeling in Blender series. In this series, we're gonna make my character you see right here, Love Chan, completely from scratch using low poly modeling and texturing techniques. Low poly modeling is a fantastic way to get into 3D modeling and Blender, and my hope is that more experienced users will also have plenty to learn from when we start talking about UV unwrapping, texturing, and rigging later on. Because not only is Blender completely free to use, this series is going to be totally free, and we're not gonna be using any paid add-ons to accomplish our modeling or texturing tasks whatsoever. This series is designed for more intermediate users of Blender. However, if you're brand new to Blender, you do not know the hotkeys or how the 3D viewport works or anything like that, do not worry. I actually have a playlist on this channel for people who are just starting out and learning Blender, and I will link that below as well. So definitely check that out if you're new to learning Blender, and then when you're done with that, you can hop right into starting the first videos in this series. There's also going to be a Gumroad version of this course, which will be linked below. This version includes downloadable versions of all of the videos in this series as well as downloadable versions of our final character rig so that's the completely textured modeled UV unwrapped and rigged love shine character that we're going to make in this series as well as this low poly base drawing you see here which you can use as a guide to make your own low poly characters that you can draw and then make 3d using everything that you've picked up and learned throughout this series so none of that is required but it's a really good bonus for those who are very serious about learning 3d modeling character modeling and blender and for this series, I would recommend you use a Blender 4.0 or above version just to make sure you have access to features like geometry nodes, which we will be using later on in this series. You can download the latest version of Blender from the blender.org website, or you can just download it from Steam. But yeah, with that intro out of the way, let's jump right into Blender. Let's set up our Blender scene for this course to make sure we have the right color settings and that our model will be looking as intended as we continue to create it throughout this course. So this is the default Blender scene. When you open Blender, this is always what you're gonna see, right? Uh, there's a few things though that by default we don't want. So first thing we're gonna wanna do is to go to this render tab and make absolutely sure our render engine is set to Eevee because we really, really don't need what Cycles does. Cycles is like a ray trace based renderer, which is not what we're going for with this style at all. So definitely make sure you're using Eevee. Also make sure that ambient occlusion is disabled, which it is right now, it's not checked. Make sure that bloom is disabled, which it already is. Make sure that screen space reflections are disabled and motion blur is disabled. And the final thing, and this is super, super important, is that you go to color management here and click on view transform. Uh, right now it's set to Ajax. I think that's how you pronounce that. This is the new default for Blender. Blender's default view transform, um, which is not ideal for us whatsoever. We really don't want to be using this. This is for photorealistic rendering. This is not for stylized stuff at all. So click on view transform and set that to standard. Standard will make it render much more like a game engine does. Um, and it'll make sure that the textures we're creating in other software will look exactly the same in Blender. There's no like weird desaturation or hue shifting happening, it'll make sure it's a one-to-one -one by setting our view transform to standard. We can also delete our cube by clicking on it right here and pressing delete just for fun. We don't really need to do that. I'm sure the first thing we spawn in the next tutorial is gonna be a cube anyway, but why not? <laughs> Just have a clean slate to start from. Now the only thing we need to make sure we're doing is saving and saving constantly. Go to file and save as, which will let you pick where on your computer you would like to save your Blender file. In my case here, this is my documents folder. I'll make a new folder for it. I'll call this low poly character. Ideally put this folder in somewhere that's automatically backed up to the cloud, like a OneDrive folder or a Dropbox folder, if you can. It's not a requirement, but that's really nice to have. Then double click your folder and name your blend low poly character. And there you go. All you have to do is hit save as. And now every time you press control plus S or you go to file, save, you are going to constantly be saving. And I would recommend you press control plus S constantly, save after every video you complete. And after every video complete, you can even press Control plus Alt plus S to save a new version of your file if you want to be able to go back to your files, which is super useful. So I'll show you that right now. So if I press Control Alt S, that will save incremental. Now, if we see the name of our file at the top of Blender here, it's called Low Poly Character One. If I press Control plus Alt plus S again, now it's Low Poly Character Two. And if I go to File, Open, 
you're going to see that we have three different blend files there. So if we ever want to like go back to an older version because it's like, oh, I don't like how I modeled this or I think I messed something up and I need to like get it from an older version of my save, that's an excellent way to save because that's what professionals in this industry use. They are always saving incrementally or they're backing up all of their data to the cloud, which automatically creates incremental saves for them. So now that we have our scene all set up and ready to go here, we need to add our image references for our character. So to do that, we're going to have to download our file here. And to download our file, all we need to do is go to the link that is in the description box below this video. So go right below this video and check the description box for that link right at the top, or you can look at the pinned comment. After clicking on that link, it's going to take you to this page right here. And it's going to say, if you're not signed into Patreon already, it's going to say locked, uh, join for free. If it says that for you, all you need to do is sign in, which is free. Making account on Patreon is totally free and click join for free. Now you'll be able to access this download and you can see the full post now. And if I click on low poly love chan resources zip, either right here or here, that will download everything we need onto my computer. It's going to ask me where I want to save this and I'm just going to save it to my downloads folder. And we can see that the download has started. So that's all you have to do. So click on the link below. Create a free account if you don't already have a Patreon account and join my Patreon for free. As a member, you don't have to pay any money. Just join for free and then you'll be able to download this. And you can download this on my Ko-fi page as well. Once you have downloaded this file and you can uh, put it anywhere on your computer, it doesn't really matter. All you need to do is right click on it and press extract all. You're gonna see this little thing pop up here, press extract. And now we're gonna have a folder with all of our stuff we need in it. So there's a bunch of files in here, but the ones we really only care about are LoveChan front view and side view for now. So I'm gonna save myself some time and right click right here and press copy address. Then I'm gonna go back to Blender. And now I want to spawn in those image references. So to do that, I press shift plus A to open the add menu. Remember we talked about that earlier, how to add things to Blender, you press shift plus A for add. Then we wanna to go to image, then reference. So after you do that, you're going to want to paste in the address we just copied right here, which is the address bar. So I'm going to click on this, press backspace. Then I'm going to press control V to paste in the address we just copied. And control V is paste if you didn't know that. Press enter here. Then I'm going to want to import our image references here. So I will just double click on this love chan side view. Then I'll press shift plus A again, go to image reference and double click on this Love Chan front view. Now we have our references in our scene. Now we have to line up our references and make sure they're scaled properly for 3D modeling. Now to scale them properly, however, we're actually gonna need to enable an add-on we're gonna use later on anyway. And that add-on is called Rigify. To enable Rigify, all you need to do is go to Edit, Preferences, and click on this add-on section right here. And then when you're done with that, Click on this little search bar and type in R-I-G-I-F-Y. So that is Rigging Rigify. Click on that little checkbox and now we have that add-on enabled. And what that does for us is when we press Shift plus A to go to the Add menu, we now have a new option under Armature here called Human Meta Rig. So click on that option to have our Human Meta Rig in our scene for us. So we don't actually need to use this human meta rig, but it's really nice for scale reference because this is a human being at the end of the day and we kind of want it generally human being sized. So now all we have to do is select both of our references here, which I will do by click dragging them like so and making sure they're both selected, which we can see in our outliner, they are both selected. Then I actually want to go to the front view here, which I can do by clicking this little Y right here in the top right of our 3D viewport. Now we're in front orthographic view, which is perfectly flat. There's no perspective, which is perfect for us. Then I want to, and I just saved, remember to save. Now I want to reset our transformations here. So I'll press Alt S, Alt G, Alt R. If we press R, we're gonna see that we're rotating along the wrong axis. We want to be rotating along the X axis. So I pressed R and then X. So again, with both of these select in the outliner, press R, then X, then punch in 9090 and press enter. Now we want to get our scale correct and we can do that by pressing G, scaling this down, pressing G and then Y, oh, excuse me, G and then Z to move this up. Then we can press S to scale this up again 
And that's getting pretty darn close, actually. So I'll move this down, pressing G and Z, like that. Uh, but it's a little hard to see if my foot is being aligned here. So we're gonna fix that by making these transparent. To do that, all you need to do is click on them. You can either click on the 3D viewport or the outliner, the outliner's a little easier. Then click this little opacity checkbox and set it to 0.5. Then click on your other reference and click this opacity checkbox and then make the value 0.5. Now we can kind of see where we're at a little bit easier because we want to zoom in here and make sure that our feet are aligned with the ground plane. That's really important. So we're going to click on both of these empties by clicking the first one and then shift clicking the second then pressing G and then Z. And now our foot is perfectly on the ground plane. I don't think it's actually centered though, because the ground plane is actually indicated by this red line you see here, and the Z axis is indicated by this blue line, you know, so that's kind of our center. So we actually wanna move our reference on the X axis a little bit more like that, just so that it's nice and aligned. G, X, yeah, something like that. It's not, and actually, actually that is pretty well aligned with the top of the head, which is perfect. We don't even need to do that, but that's nice to have. <laughs> All right, so then I'm gonna middle mouse on out of that and select our topmost image reference, uh, which I believe, uh, no, that's the wrong one. So I'm gonna right click to cancel and press um, this one, click on that one, press G and then press Y, move this back. Then I'm gonna click on our other image reference, then press R and then uh, whoop. Uh, press Z. I had to figure out which axis that was for a second there. So this, we actually want to rotate this on the Z axis. All I want to do is again, select it, press R, press Z, and then press 90 because we want this rotation perfectly on this axis. Now I'm going to press G and then I'm going to press X to move this back a little bit. So we have some breathing room here. Now, if we go to our front view, Looks like this is really nicely aligned. We go to our side view. This is not super nicely aligned because we can tell just by looking at this, this is generally where the top of the head is supposed to be. Our top of the head and our reference is like right here. So that's not ideal. And to fix that, we can just press G and then Y to just move it along the Y axis and kind of line it up like so. Again, this does not need to be perfect, but we can see here that, oh, look at this, the, the Y is perfectly aligned with the foot right there. So that's great. The top of the head is basically aligned with the um, top of the head for the Rigify rig here, which is awesome. So by middle mousing on out of this, we can see that things are looking pretty good. So in this tutorial, we fixed the color management right here so that things are gonna line up perfectly color-wise when we start importing our textures and applying them to our model. We also learned about saving in Blender and saving incrementally, and we also got our references set up on both axes and spawned in our meta rigs so that we'll have be totally ready to start modeling our character in the very next video. So and by all means, if you're interested, please check out the Gumroad version of this tutorial series that includes the final fully textured, fully rigged 3D model of Lovechan, downloadable versions of all the videos in this series, a low poly based turnaround drawing that you can use to draw your own original characters on top of, then make 3D using everything you've learned in this course, as well as a bonus introduction to Blender series if you're a beginner or new to learning Blender. So thank you so much for watching. I hope you'll check it out today. I'll see you in the next video and have a great day.